Alright, hey y'all, it's Miss Summers with your notes today on sedimentary rocks. So, we are, let's see, three days into this unit. The first day we talked about rock cycle and just a quick refresher on the three types of rocks. You know, you have your sedimentary, your igneous, and your metamorphic. Yesterday we looked at igneous and metamorphic a little more in detail. You know, we compared extrusive versus intrusive igneous and then foliated versus non-foliated metamorphic. So today we're looking at the last rock types um, in detail, sedimentary rock. Um, what you should take away from this, these notes are the steps that you need to make a sedimentary rock and the three main types of sedimentary rock and how those are different from each other. All right, so let's start with a question. Sedimentary rocks are the most common types of rocks on the Earth's surface. All right. If we go back to last unit and we think about how rocks are made or how crust is made, remember crust is created at those divergent oceanic oceanic divergent boundaries at mid-ocean ridges. All of that is igneous rock when it starts, but rocks on the surface tend to be sedimentary. Why is that? Well, it's because sedimentary rocks are created from the erosion and deposition of other rocks. Basically, once a rock gets on the surface, it gets exposed to the air and water. That's going to make it break down, and it's going to move it around and form a new rock. And that's why sedimentary is the most common. All right. So let's look at the steps. How do I make a sedimentary rock? All right, there are five steps, and you do need to know the order, and you need to know um, the keyword for each of them. I'll, I'll highlight that out to you or point that out. All right, our first step is weathering, and we were, we were going to talk all about weathering on Friday. All right, weathering breaks rocks into smaller pieces, so weathering is breaking. Weathering is, so if you take your hands and clasp them together and, like, lace your fingers, all right, if you broke your hands apart, that's weathering. Weathering is different than erosion, all right, normally when people say weathering and erosion, sometimes they get them mixed up. I don't want you to do that. I want you to know that erosion is the removing. So when something erodes, it moves. All right, things that cause erosion are wind and water. Those are the same types of things that can also cause weathering. So that's why sometimes it can be confusing. Weathering is breaking, erosion is moving. Our next step is deposition, and I like to highlight the word deposit in deposition. Okay, if I get a check um, in the mail from, you know, grandma or whoever, I deposit that in my bank account. I put it down in my bank account so I can use it later. All right, deposition is the putting down or dropping of sediments. So I break them, I move them, I put them down. Then I compact them. Compaction is just what it sounds like, the squeezing of sediments together. And then our last step, cementation. All right, so I like to see the word cement right there, cement. This happens when the dissolved minerals in water gets in between these little pieces, these sediments, and it glues it together. All right, so from the top, we have weathering, which is breaking, erosion, which is moving the little pieces, deposition, putting the little pieces, the sediments down. They get compacted together. They're squeezed together. And then they get cemented or glued back into one rock. Okay, so those are my five main steps. All right. Let's take a look at some characteristics, things that you might see in various sedimentary rocks. You might see strata in sedimentary rocks. So strata is this layering effect. Um, so you remember with metamorphic rocks, it can be foliated where they have stripes. That's because the different density minerals get squeezed out. Strata happens because layers of sediment gets deposited over time. Okay, um, you can think of this rock, so this is like a cliff face, you can see the layers. 
You can think of it like a stack of magazines, all right? If you order a magazine subscription and in January you get the first issue, you read it, you look at the pictures, whatever, and then you put it on the table. Well, the next month, February comes along, you get your magazine, you read it, you look at the pictures, and you put it on top of the January issue. The January one is always going to be down here. The newest one is always going to be up here, and that's what we see in rocks. The oldest layers are at the bottom, the youngest layers are at the top. And that gives us a good idea of how old the Earth is, all right? We can say, all right, this took this many hundreds of thousands of years to form, and this took this many hundreds of thousands of years. I add them all up, I can see how long ago this whole thing was made. So that's strata, the layers. Something else you might see in sedimentary rocks are fossils. So fossils are, whoops, go back. Fossils are the remains of living things, so they can be animal skeletons like you have here and here. It could be um, shells, footprints, eggs, nests, whatever. Sedimentary rock is the only rock that has these. And it makes sense if you think about how the other two rocks are made. Igneous rock is made from melted rock. Okay, so if you have, if you were like this little fish, okay, this little fish died, and if this rock became igneous, it would have to melt first. That would destroy the fossil. It wouldn't be there anymore. It would be melted. In metamorphic rock, remember, metamorphic doesn't melt, but you have super high heat and pressure. That would change the chemical structure of this. It would not be preserved. It would, it would go away. So sedimentary rocks are important um, it, when we're looking at studying the past. This is how we know what life used to look like. So like, this is, this is, an, this is called an Archaeopteryx. Just a little side tangent. It's one of the uh, winged dinosaurs. So you can actually see its little impression, like its little feathers right here. This is kind of how we know that dinosaurs and birds are related. So it gives us a clue to evolution, which is really neat. So thanks sedimentary rocks. You're awesome. All right. So sedimentary rocks are formed in five steps. They can be layered and they can have fossils. Now let's look at our three main types. All right, we're going to look at this chart later on. You need to be able to read this. Our first type of sedimentary rock is called clastic. Clastic sedimentary rocks break down under the forces of nature, wind or water, and then they get put back together. So these are rocks that are made out of other rocks. I'm going to say that again. Clastic sedimentary rocks are made out of other rocks. It's pretty straightforward. It's kind of what you think about when you think about sedimentary. Some examples of this, conglomerate. So this is conglomerate. Conglomerate has big sediments in it, like pebbles that you can individually see. So this used to be its own pebble, that used to be its own pebble, and now they're glued together. Here's some other fine examples. Some good examples. You see how they're cemented together. They've been squeezed, these this group has been squeezed together and cemented. Another example, shale, which that is, I have a hard time saying that word, y'all. It's shale, shale, shale. Say shell with a very, very, very southern drawl. Shale is made of clay sediments that are layered on top. So if I took like a microscope and I were to look at this um, at a very, very high magnification, you would see the layers of clay. Clay is a very tiny sediment. Cool. All right. Our next type is the chemical sedimentary rock. This is also called crystalline. So if you see crystalline, it's the same thing. That's spelled C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-L-I-N-E. Crystalline. This is made from water. So water dissolves minerals, and then they precipitate or come out of that solution. So if you've ever um, made rock candy, 
Okay, rock candy, you take sugar and you put it in boiling water, you stir it up, that's a solution of sugar and water. And then you pour the solution in a jar and then you put a stick in there and you leave it overnight or for however many days. And when you come back, the sugar has come out of the water. The sugar is not dissolved in the water anymore. It's stuck to the stick and grew crystals. That's exactly how chemical sedimentary rocks are made. All right, an example of this, uh, rock salt. All right, if you have like, um, like sea salt, like in a sea salt shaker or rock salt, which you put on like driveways when it gets cold or it's gonna snow or ice or whatever, that's made by taking ocean water and just getting rid of the water, boiling it. Boiling the water away, the salt gets left behind. Um, this is a super fun kind of artsy, artsy project that I found a few years ago. Um, this artist in Israel, I guess, that would make sense. They were doing an art project where they took various objects and they put them in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has a very high salt concentration. and super salty. And they would leave these things in there for like a month or six months or a year. And over time, these little salt crystals would grow on them. Okay, the salt was dissolved in the water, and now it's forming these little crystals on various objects. Okay, so that's your chemical sedimentary rock. Our final sedimentary rock, whoop, JK. I do not need you to memorize these things about limestone. It is another example of a sedimentary, of a chemical sedimentary rock. Um, it's made in caves. All right, caves have calcium carbonate mixed in the, with the water. When the water drips down, the minerals get left behind. That's how you get those stalactites and stalagmites. Again, don't need you to memorize that. Our final rock, I do need you to memorize this, is the bioclastic rock. And you are very, very clever children, and you know that bio means life. So these are plants that were made out of once living things. Okay, so generally it's either going to be plant material or seashells. Um, seashells are made by living things. Like that's, that's a part of something skeleton, basically. All right. I want you to know these examples. Whoops, go back. All right, coal. We're going to talk about coal a whole bunch towards the end of the year when we talk about human impact. Coal is a rock that we burn in order to make energy. The reason it is a good energy source is because it is made out of plants. It's basically like super concentrated firewood. That's essentially what it is. All right, so over time... These decaying plants, their fossilized remains, get pushed down, and it turns into this. Um, coquina, uh, coquina, 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 that's what it is, is another type of rock. Um, it is made out of seashells. So these, this rock formation, this little rock here, if you zoom in, you see they're just fragments of broken shells. Um, if you've ever been to Florida, to St. Augustine, which is the oldest city in the United States. Super cool place. Highly recommend it. Um, they have this really neat place on one of their like historic tours. It's the old city gates that they built like in the, I think, late 1500s or maybe early 1600s. And it's these big pillars made entirely out of this, this rock, um, which was super accessible to them because they're by the ocean. So you would expect a lot of this there. All right, bioclastic, came from a living thing, cool. Um, I threw this in here, just a quick continental drift review from last unit. The coal in Antarctica, so remember Antarctica, let's see, where is Antarctica on here? It's somewhere over yonder. All right, Antarctica has coal in it. The coal told Alfred Wegener, or Alfred Wegener knew if there was coal there, that means there used to be plants. And if there used to be plants, it used to be warmer. Which means Antarctica was not always down here at the South Pole. It must have been somewhere else. That's how he knew that they had moved. Yay. Cool. All right. So the last thing I have in these notes is the schemes for rock identification. 
okay? When I give you this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two characteristics of a rock, and then I want you to be able to use this to identify it. All right, so let's give an example. A bioclastic rock with varied grain size. All right, so I'm going to look at my first example, and I'm going to say bioclastic. Okay, well that says clastic. This is crystalline or chemical. Here's bioclastic down here. I know my answer is going to be somewhere in these two rows. Then I'm going to look for my next characteristic, varied grain size. Well, grain size is the next column over. Bioclastic and varied. I'm going to go all the way over and see what it is. It's coal. Cool. Let's do another one. Identify a clastic sedimentary rock with clay grain size. Well, I go over here, I look for clastic, and clastic's right there. My answer is somewhere in the top half of this chart. And then I'm going to look for clay grain size. Well, there's my grain. Well, there's clay. I'm going to go straight over, and that is shale. All right. You do the next one. Pause the video if you need. All right, we want to identify a crystalline sedimentary rock with a halite composition. Again, do I need to do I need you to know what halite means? No, I just need you to be able to find it on here. So here's crystalline. It's going to be in one of these three rows. I'm looking for a halite composition, so I'm going to look at the composition column. And there's halite. Cool. Go straight across. That's rock salt. Okay. So that concludes our notes for today on sedimentary rocks. Make sure you review the five steps you need to make a sedimentary rock, the three types of sedimentary rock, and I want you to make sure practice with this chart a little bit more um, and have a good day.